I want to talk about the fact that we don't give sign language interpreters enough credit, enough appreciation for what they do. We need to give them a break, we need to help them, we need to appreciate them more and thank them for what they do because it's so hard, it's such hard work to not only get to where they are, to get to the stage of interpreting professionally, but also doing the actual job itself where every second there is such high level of focus and concentration and interpretation and it's so hard. So let's give them credit for what they do. I've talked about it in a number of time on concentration fatigue where deaf people can get exhausted because of the high level of concentration that is required if you want to pick up what the other person is saying vocally. And that is something that I get every single day because you focus so hard, you trying to absorb all information and you're trying to really understand very hard what are they saying. I've talked about it in more detail, I've written a blog about it, you, you can check it out in the description. And it's an important topic because it's not something that you can see. People think that doesn't exist and it's not really a medical diagnosis as far as I'm aware, people don't really take it seriously, but it does exist and people do suffer from it. And I think this is another thing that we need to talk about for sign language interpreters, there is an expression, a terminology, a glossary called interpreter fatigue. And this is so similar to concentration fatigue, but obviously for interpreters, because if you think about it, the whole aspect of simultaneously interpreting a language into another language it's very very hard work and by the way i'm not just talking about sign language interpreter even those who are professional interpreter in other languages they also have to work very very hard to do what they do so if you imagine when you see on tv or on on a magazine pictures or whatever you see a meeting in the un in the united nations and generally you see dozens, hundreds of people from different countries all around the world and the main language tend to be English most of the time. But of course not everyone is fluent in that language. So you do see in the background lots of booths, lots of people inside with their headphones on, microphone, and they're the ones who are interpreting from English to whatever language that they are professionally assigned for. And that's their job. And it's a very hard job as well, it's similar to sign language interpreter as well, not the same. But it's the same thing where simultaneously interpreting requires so much brain power you would not believe. Because for every single second of their job, they are actively listening and it's a high level of listening as well, really focusing so hard to listen to what are they saying and then almost immediately interpret that. That is mentally exhausting, physically exhausting, and even at times emotionally exhausting, depending on the topic as well. And that's something that I see a lot when I see interpreters signing at events. I admire what they do because they work very, very hard, first of all, all are studying to get the qualification, to get to where they are, and then stay on top of that as well. That requires a lot of effort. But if you haven't seen sign language interpreters at an event before, more often than not, you will see two or more per event. You don't always see just one at an event. And sometimes, because of budget or whatever reasons, you tend to see one. And that is really, really hard for me to imagine because the reason you have two or more is because then they can switch and take a break from each other. You know, they can help each other out, you know, for 10 minutes or whatever. They, one person does it and then they switch to another so that they each can get a break mentally and physically as well. So if you can imagine one person doing that for continuously, I can't even imagine how hard that must be. If it's just one person and maybe at an event, like a conference, and they have to in interpret the whole thing, that's just so hard work. Maybe it's a bit different when you are, for example, interpreting for a family to a doctor. It's a different kind of challenge because you do get emotionally charged and invested because it's a very hard topic sometimes talk about it. it's a different kind of challenge but if you think about it if one person is interpreting for family and a doctor there may be only maybe it's a bit easier because it doesn't require hours and hours of interpretation at times but that aside it doesn't really matter it's all about the job that they do it's really really hard and just like i said i've talked about in the medical 
background or in a business or in any, anything else because it's one thing to be interpreting and excelling at that job but it's another if they specialize in a specific topic so for example if that person is specifically focused on the medical industry and focusing for interpreting in that area that's the whole different kind of challenge because not only you have to be very good at be, being able to express the diagnosis very well to the doctor and return that information to the patient you have to be kind of almost emotionally invested in it because you want to be able to express that feeling of the patient you want to be able to understand how to talk about the medical situation and anything going on along that line and it's very very hard and on top of that there might be even really hard topic to talk about if you think about it for a situation where doctors and patients are having chats and it might turn into bad news then the interpreter will have to deliver that and the way you do it is hard as well i can't really work out how they do it because this is the thing people always forget about doctors and nurses are trained to deliver bad news to patients but interpreters are not and that is why sometimes you do hear in the background you don't always see it in the news but you do hear interpreters getting depressed or mentally challenged and really emotionally exhausted because they had to deliver the news again and again and again and they're not always necessarily trained for that and it might not even be prepared for that they might just arrive and hear the news and they're like surprised themselves it's like i have to deliver this news to the patient so if you imagine that no wonder i hear stories about mental health issues for interpreters in various environment but in this case if i talk about the medical area of course it's tough for them of course it's really emotionally hard for them to deal with when you are connected with the patient you know you know you're maybe built a relationship with them and you deliver the news to them of course it's hard so we have to appreciate that level of you know that's not just a professional job that's something that they're doing for a personal person life where you know this is this is the whole life they have to live with it's not a professional business environment where they have to maybe interpret a document and pass it on to another person that's kind of different when you're talking about someone's health someone's life that's hard and even though i don't depend on sign language interpreters well at this time anyway i don't need them but you know i sometimes use them to pick up a few words here and there who knows what might happen in the future i still want to appreciate what they do because i'm in the phase of learning sign language and yeah it requires a lot of time and investment and resources and energy to get been able to do it from zero to being a professional and i have a lot of admiration for that and also again for anyone who's interpreting another language you know it's just very admirable that they do that as a job and uh, yeah you can't really criticize them for doing that because it's really really hard so i appreciate that i want people to know that you know this is a tough job we should appreciate them we should thank them we should really really thank them for what they're doing because they are making a huge difference in whatever environment that you in whatever industry you're in whatever event that they're helping to interpret or situation they're making a big difference so i also want to share information to anyone who's thinking about hiring sign language interpreters or they're doing that already for an event for anything like that the thing that you want to think about and just to make their job easier and at the end of the day if their job is you know easier and it's helping them then they will be able to deliver the service at a better quality for you so everybody wins if you know you can help them as well if possible ideally you want to meet them ahead of time before that particular event is happening get to know them understand how they work understand what do they need on the day and organizing schedules to help them to work out when they can take breaks because even if it's either one or two or more interpreters there's still need breaks just like anyone we all need breaks so work with them meet ahead of them you know meet with them ahead of time and uh, help each other out you know it's easy easily done by just doing that before the actual event start if you have any document resources information that you can provide for them like website or brochures or anything that contains information about the topic of your industry your your, your event you know if you have them give them that information as well that will help them to 
get them up to speed about what kind of languages they should use and how to interpret certain words and maybe jargons in the industry that they have to think about and be aware of as well. Again, that just makes them mentally ready to interpret it for you. So if you have any resources at all, give them as much as you can and they will be able to use that way ahead of time and they'll be able to be better prepared when they arrive at your event. Just like when you have attendees at your conference, for example, and there are breaks you know, regularly, same thing with interpreters. Allocate them breaks, give them breaks. And yes, I would recommend to have two or more, minimum two. I think most agencies will say you need two or more. Even if you have two or more and they give each other breaks, they still need complete separate breaks from the event, from a speaker's token, just like you would do for your own attendees as well. So be aware of that, allocate breaks and talk to them about when they can do that, when's the best time for them to do that, when do they need it, all these things. So that's why, again, you should talk with them ahead of time to better prepare your event. If you think about it, when you have obviously two or more interpreters, then they will be switching. Be aware when that happens. Because let's just say you are switching from one speaker to another and in that moment the interpreters are switching, then you need to be aware of that because Someone might start speaking before the interpreter is ready to be on stage and start the interpretation. So be aware when that change happens because you don't want them to catch up really, really quickly. Again, it requires a lot of energy and resources. So just be aware when the changes are happening. Sometimes just a few seconds to get them ready again, sometimes a bit longer. But again, be aware of that. Another thing to be aware of is the speed and pace of when a person is speaking on stage or any other situation. And of course, if you speak very, very fast, then the interpreter will be like working overtime to catch up with them. And again, it's not good for anyone, is it? If you speak too fast for anyone, you speak too fast for the audience, nobody wins. It's just really, really hard to catch up. So it might be worth just notifying the speakers that there are sign language interpreters and they are there to help them as well as you and they help everyone and the audience who require them, the people who require the interpreters, it will help them as well. So make sure you notify the speaker that this is happening and you don't want to go too fast or don't want to, you know, just go at a pace where there are no full stop at all. Just take it easy, take it easy is what I'm saying, but also be aware of that situation as well. So if you round it up, basically, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to all interpreters out there. Even though I don't really need it right now and I don't depend on it 100% like other people, I still, first of all, I, I needed to learn sign language, but also I massively appreciate what you do and uh, the effort that you put in as well. And it's just admirable, really is admirable. So let's give them a break. Let's appreciate what they do. Let's also remember to thank them for what they do. It is still a hard job at the end of the day. And yeah, hopefully everyone will be happy with that because like I said, if the interpreters are happy, then your audience are happy. And then your whoever you're speaking with, if you need it, is happy. Everyone wins in that circle. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know what you think, just leave a comment or check out the show notes and the description down below on what you think about it. If you're an interpreter, do you agree with what I'm saying? And if you share more stories, I would love to hear that as well. But let me know what you think. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in whatever platform that you're using. Just subscribe and uh, just to be up to date with everything that's going on on Hear Me Out. In the meantime, I hope to speak to you again soon. Take care.